जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिवा सादी गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा एंड वेलकम बैक थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग टुडे वे डिस्कसिंग वर्स नंबर 53 ऑफ चैप्टर नंबर टू फ्रॉम श्रीमद भगवद गीता एंड इन द प्रीवियस वर्स कृष्णा कंपेयर्स द वेदास एज डेंस डार्क फॉरेस्ट ऑफ इल्यूजन so krishna says to arjuna that when your intelligence has surpassed or passed out of the dense forest of delusion you shall become indifferent to all that you have heard and all that you will be hearing so the vedas are or the karma kanda sections of vedas normally vedas are the revealed scriptures that's why they are called as shabda brahman but the karma kanda section of vedas which describes the fruitive activities and it also helps the devotees to avoid the material pains so those sections of vedas results into cycle of birth and death and hence it is keeping the living entity in that particular cycle of bhoga and aishwarya so therefore it is compared to the dense forest of delusion however in vedas there are other sections so upanishads and all the other sections which describes about the gyana kanda and the upasana kanda section so that talks about the actual purpose of veda and when one understands that then they understand that there is a difference between body and soul and they also understand the purpose of life so then they can progress towards the path of liberation towards mukti so therefore krishna also says in bhagavad gita earlier that this is avaram karma and, uh, krishna says in the uh, 49th verse of bhagavad gita te dure nahi avaram karma so keep at long distance avaram karma means karma kanda sections of the vedas and then perform buddhi yoga or nishkam karma yoga so when your intelligence has passed or when you are no no more uh, no longer attached or attracted uh, by this uh, forest of delusion then you will be indifferent you shall become indifferent to all that you have heard in the past and then all you may be hearing in the future so then krishna continues in this verse 2.53 and then he talks about how you will attain samadhi so let's read the verse chapter 2 verse number 53 shruti viprati pannate yadastasyati nischala samadha vachala buddhis tada yogam avapsyasi when your mind is no longer disturbed by the flowery language of veda so we see here krishna is repeating this particular theme about the vedas again and again so when your mind is no longer disturbed by the flowery language of the vedas and when it is fixed in the trance or self realization that is samadha vachalas buddhis then you will have attained the divine consciousness then you would have attained yoga so this is what is krishna is saying in this verse now let's try to understand the sanskrit terms so first line uh, for 53 a talks about shruti vipriti panna <coughs> vipriti panna te shruti vipriti panna te yada stashchati nischala so what it means that even so shruti over here means the vedic scripture so even when one hears from the vedic scripture and what one hears so something which is different from what they have understood up to now so vipriti panna means initially you may have heard about fruitive activities from the vedic literature that the goal of life is enjoying dharma artha kama so initially one may have heard about the fruitive activities and fruitive result from the scriptures and then later they hear about 
डिवोशनल सर्विस और निष्काम कर्म योग और बुद्धि योग एंड दे अंडरस्टैंड दिस डिवोशनल सर्विस वेरी नाइसली एंड लेटर अगेन दे हियर अबाउट दिस फ्रूटिव रिजल्ट फ्रॉम द स्क्रिप्चर्स सो दिस इज वॉट री हियरिंग अबाउट दिस बट वॉट हैपन्स टू दैट पर्सन हु हैज अंडरस्टूड अबाउट बुद्धि योग देन दैट इज एक्सप्लेन हियर यदा स्थास्यति निश्चला मीन्स दे रिमेन फिक्स्ड और अनमोड सो अर्लियर दे हैव हर्ड अबाउट द फ्रूटिव एक्टिविटीज देन दे हियर अबाउट डिवोशनल सर्विस बट नेक्स्ट टाइम वे दे हियर और लेटर दे हियर अबाउट द फ्रूटिव एक्टिविटीज अगेन दे आर नॉट डिस्टर्ब बाय दैट सो दैट इज स्थास्यति निश्चला और दे रिमेन फिक्स्ड दे आर नॉट डिस्टर्ब और अनमोड and then the third line is samadhav achala buddhis so one remains fixed means one is not disturbed by hearing about the fruitive results they are not attracted to it anymore so krishna is not saying here samadhav achala buddhis uh, sorry sir so krishna is not saying here samadhav achala manas he is using the term buddhis instead of manas so why he is using buddhi is instead of mind mana means mind and buddhi means intelligence so our mind becomes deluded because our intelligence is deluded once our intelligence is completely fixed then mind will not be able to shake us there may be situation they may come up but if the intelligence is fixed then the mind will not be disturbed or mind in other words mind will not take over intelligence so achala is fixed like uh, there is another word chanchala chanchala means is flickering or very disturbed but over here it is achala achala means it is fixed so once we are convinced that krishna is the ultimate goal then the intelligence will never be shaken and then what is the result tada yogam avapsasi at that time you know that you have attained yoga tada tada yogam avapsasi means you have achieved yoga at that point of time so krishna is giving a characteristics of yoga as being undisturbed by everything material then you can stay fixed in spiritual and when one is undisturbed by everything material then you have attained yoga tada yogam avapsasi you have attained yoga so let's see in the purport what shila prabhupad has um, taught so while i have put a picture over here uh, as a background of this particular verse so in the background is describing this vedic literature and in the foreground this picture indicates that um, shila prabhupad He is actually taking diksha, diksha from his guru. So, becoming uh, or coming in contact with spiritual life begins with taking shelter of a spiritual master. So, this is Sri La Prabhupad, and this is his guru, his spiritual master, his divine grace, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Sri La Prabhupad. So. Shila Prabhupad began his devotional service or devotional life or buddhi yoga by taking shelter of guru without taking shelter of guru the fixing of the mind is not at all possible our spiritual life has to be guided that's why i put this picture to remind us that our spiritual life has to be done under the instruction of a, a spiritual master or a guru so this is very very important this is one of the key factor we cannot approach krishna directly we have to approach krishna through the um, guidance of a spiritual master a guru who who is merciful enough to teach us or give us this science of krishna so that's why this picture is here to remind us that even shila prabhupad who has spread the krishna consciousness movement by the instruction of his guru the instruction of bhakti siddhanta sri thakur was you spread this message of krishna 
all over the western countries in english language so propa at the later age of his life he took that instruction very seriously and he came to america and then from there he started his con and then he translated so many books including bhagavad gita into english and now we are all getting benefited by reading this english version of shila prabhupad which is named as bhagavad gita as it is so he has translated this book he has not done any kind of interpretation so this is very important because when somebody interprets then they put their own thoughts in that book but over here shila prabhupad just translated the message of krishna and gave it to us as it is without any change so whatever krishna gave to arjuna we are very very lucky to receive the same information so let's see what shila prabhupad has to say in this purport so in the purport prabhupad talks about who is in samadhi so samadhi is fixed consciousness right so who is in samadhi to say that one is in samadhi is to say that one has fully realized krishna consciousness that is one is full uh, one in uh, sorry that is one in full samadhi has realized brahman parmatma and bhagavan so this we have discussed in the beginning of bhagavad gita that there are the absolute truth can be realized in three different ways as brahman parmatma and bhagavan and the highest being is Brahm, uh, bhagavan and that bhagavan is shri krishna and brahman is the effulgence bodily effulgence of bhagavan and parmatma is the feature of bhagavan in this material world where the parmatma is sitting in an each and every one of our heart and he is giving us directions and he is because of him the material world is running <clears throat> so we are going to study those details about brahman parmatma and bhagavan later also however uh, over here we understand that somebody who is in full samadhi he has realized these features brahman parmatma and bhagavan so if you realize the highest Uh, part which is bhagavan then you automatically realize the brahman and parmatma because they are lower actually they are non dual but uh, normally generally it is uh, the the bhagavan feature is uh, much more accessible compared to brahman and parmatma next papa says the highest perfection of self realization is to understand that one is eternally the servitor of krishna and that once only business is to discharge one's duty in krishna consciousness so when we understand that we are the part and parcel of the lord then what is our duty so our duty of the part and parcel is to serve the whole so the whole is krishna and we are his part and parcel and we need to engage in serving him and that service is called as loving devotional service or it is bhakti so when we are dealing with krishna it is in terms of bhakti otherwise you know uh, in this particular section krishna has not talked about himself so in this particular part it is nishkama karma yoga next prabhupad got talks about is krishna consciousness is fixed a person in krishna consciousness is fixed in samadhi a krishna conscious person or unflinching devotee of the lord should not be disturbed by the flowery language of vedas nor be engaged in fruitive activities for promotion to heavenly kingdoms so when one understands that you know he doesn't belong to this material world so he doesn't want to participate in the enjoying enjoyment and suffering in this material world so when one has that understanding then he is not interested in going to the heavenly planets he wants to go back to the spiritual world goloka planet or goloka vrindavan how krishna conscious person gets his instructions so normally people will get the instruction from the scriptures so now we have talked about that in vedas the instructions are there in uh, as different sections so one is the karma kanda section which talks about this fruitive activities but in veda there are also the gyana kanda section and uh, upasana kanda section so these are also there but these are so many 
books to study so it is very difficult to study in one lifetime <coughs> however okay in krishna consciousness one comes directly in communion with krishna so as we start serving krishna then krishna reciprocates and then gradually as we advance uh, in krishna consciousness then krishna actually instructs from within and from without from within uh, from as a parmatma and from without means from outside as a spiritual master so in krishna consciousness one comes directly in communion with krishna and thus all directions from krishna may be understood in that transcendental state so when somebody is very advanced then krishna within the heart reveals exactly what needs to be done so that is for the topmost devotees but in our situation you know what we should do is written here by shila prabhupad one is sure to achieve result by such activities and attain conclusive knowledge so when is one is in com- communion then it becomes very easy and they are um, sure to at- attain the knowledge uh, by the instruction which is given by krishna himself directly one has to carry out the orders of krishna or his representative the spiritual master so this is the line which i was talking about from outside or uh, within it is parmatma uh, which is order of krishna directly or from outside it is the from the representative of krishna which is the spiritual master so then the spiritual master instructs uh, the disciple uh, so this diksha ceremony with the picture which we have seen here is the ceremony in which the the student in this case is shila prabhupad has accepted uh, bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur as his spiritual master and then bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur you know he gave him this mala to perform japa so this is the beginning of spiritual life this is called as initiation and uh, after that you know the disciple takes instruction from spiritual master what he should do and what he should not then he follow has to follow the instruction of uh, the spiritual master so because the spiritual master is also following krishna whatever is krishna's wish is also spiritual master's wish so in prabhupad's case we have seen that the spiritual master gave him one instruction he gave him many instructions but the one most important instruction was that you translate all these books into english and then you preach in the um, the western countries the science of krishna consciousness in english so then prabhupad took that instruction to his heart and then he started writing the books in english or translating the books in english and then he also uh, opened this iskon centers all over the world so that's how iskon was formed because bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur was a guru of shila prabhupad he instructed shila prabhupad to do this act or do this service for krishna and prabhupad sincerely did that service so that is what prabhupad is writing over here one has to carry out the orders of krishna or his representative the spiritual master so prabhupad taught us by his example how to follow the instruction of guru it you to take the instruction of guru to our heart and then carry out to the best of our capability okay so whatever has been put in this purport is in this presentation format and in this purport Mm, and in this translation uh, there is one more benefit of acting in buddhi yoga that is realization of one's relation with krishna as eternal servitor so that is samadhi so this is 2.53 so in 50 we are talking about the first benefit which is freedom from good and bad reactions and in 51 it was freedom from cycle of birth and death in 52 it was indifferent to vedic rituals and in the 53rd verse today's words is realization of relationship with krishna as eternal servitor and attain samadhi so with this we'll stop here and then we'll continue further in the next session thank you so much shila prabhupad ki jai shrimad bhagavad gita ki jai gor premanande hari bol